controlled by the rudder is rotation about the vertical axis. All three axes go through the center of gravity. The Real World Design Challenge was the framework from which we began to understand the many of these concepts. Let's talk about the challenge. Our first design objective was to minimize the objective function, which was drag over lift times the weight of the plane parts, as shown on, on the slide. Our second design objective was to minimize unbalanced pitching moments. Shown on the screen are the constraints of the project. I'm going to talk a little bit about our design process. The conceptual design process began with exploration. Our team spent many hours learning the aerodynamics related terms and concepts related to the challenge. It was important to understand the basics. We quickly learned that it was going to take a team effort to design our airplane. Before moving on to the next phase of development, we made sure the entire team understood the challenge objectives, constraints, and variables. The preliminary design process describes the steps we took to work towards our solution. Before defining these steps, we spent many hours working with the supply tools to understand how they would help us reach our solution. The first step in the process was to select airfoils from the UIUC database online for consideration. Next, to narrow down our choices, we used a program called DesignFoil, which tested 2D, section, 2D data of the airfoils and gave us lift over drag data. We then selected the eight airfoils with the best lift and drag performance. We then built these airfoils into testable wing sections in Pro-E and tested them with our computational fluid dynamics program, flow.efd. The results were used to select one airfoil to use for the wings of our initial plane design. Using Pro-E, we built our initial airplane using the selected airfoil and the tail that we had designed during the state challenge. We ran a CFD test on the initial plane to determine CFD values. These values were used in the analysis program as we began the process of refining our plane. Finally, we began the testing and optimization process to find the best values for our design variables. These values would be used during the final design phase. This involved an iterative loop using the analysis program Pro-E and Flow-EFD. The final design process was intended to balance pitching moments and vertical forces. This was again an iterative process using the analysis tool Pro-E and Flow-EFD. Only this time, instead of changing the design variables, we changed the local angle of attack, tail airfoil, and stabilizer incidence angle. We came to the conclusion of our design process when we got a result that satisfied the challenge criteria, minimized the objective function, and balanced the pitching moment and vertical forces. Supercritical airfoils were originally created by NASA to delay the onset of wave drag in supersonic aircraft. We chose to use supercritical airfoils because they are aerodynam aerodynamically efficient due to reduced boundary layer separation and versatility at varying angles of attack and speed. We used a program called DesignFool to narrow down our airfoil choices. We started with 22 supercritical airfoils from the UIUC airfoil database site. We then used a program called Reverse to reorder the coordinates, which was made for this challenge per our request. These reordered coordinates were then used in a design foil to get lift over drag values. These values allowed us to downselect from 22 to 8 airfoils. We then used Pro-E to build wings from these top 8 airfoils. We tested them in CFD to further, test, to further validate our results from design foil. These tests were run with zero angle of attack, no sweep or taper. Our results are shown on the screen. We selected SC21006 because it had the best lift over drag values. After choosing our airfoils, we, we decided to incorporate our tail design from the state challenge into our design. Since the main goal of the state challenge was to build our tail, we used this as a baseline for our national challenge. We started our research on the tails by looking at all the different configurations and looking at the pros and cons. 
We decided that the V-tail and the conventional tail were the, the optimal choices because they provided low weight and low drag because the V-tail only had two stabilizers. And we also chose the conventional tail because it's conventional. And uh, <laughs> it's widely used and proven in the field. We decided against using a downward extending tail because we knew this would, this would limit our 12 degree angle of rotation to the ground plane, limiting our ability to, um, so, to balance the pitching moments. Ultimately, we chose the V-tail because of the advantages it gave us for weight and drag. This slide shows a number of things. First, it shows our innovative way to build the V-tail in Pro-E. This was innovative because it didn't, it, 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 the method wasn't included in any of the tutorials for the challenge. It also shows two variables that we could change on the tail. These are sweep and dihedral. Two variables that are not shown are the aspect ratio and the airfoil. It also shows an image of how we measured our wings and tail in Pro Engineer to find mean aerodynamic core. This would come into play later when we size our tail in the tail sizing spreadsheet. The tail sizing spreadsheet was used to find the minimum area for the horizontal and vertical stabilizers that we could use for our tail design. We plugged in various values and measurements from our aircraft and it gave us the, the, max, the, max, the minimum area that we could use. We then used the area to um, apply this to our conventional tail and find, and find apply this to our conventional tail and then we would build it in Pro-E. For the V-tail we had to find the we had to use trigonometry to find the areas that we would use. So we used trigonometry and found a dihedral of 28.7 degrees and a V-tail area of 137.33 square feet total. Later this process was automated in the National Challenge using um, an add-on to the RWDC analysis program. This is our final tail design. As you can see, it used a cambered airfoil in the state challenge. In the national challenge, we changed this because it provided too much lift on our aircraft and, and hindered us in um, balancing the pitching moments. Our team worked hard from the beginning to learn and understand the Cessna analysis program and how it could help us in our challenge. For the national challenge, we quickly realized that we could use this tool to solve for things such as aspect ratio, sweep, and taper. We also quickly realized that aspect ratio and sweep played a much more significant role in the objective function than taper. The Cessna analysis program proved to be a key tool in our design process. We could use it to solve for each design variable. With it, we could construct wings, tail stabilizers, and tail cones, and each of these things had their own build files. We later incorporated them into a batch file in which they all ran at one time. We also incorporated equations found in the tail sizing spreadsheet so it would automatically update our tail area. This flowchart depicts our wing optimization process. As you can see, we start with the Cessna analysis program. What we enter into that are iterative values for things such as sweep and aspect ratio. We then run the program, which gives us a geometry file that we run through an original program called an IBL converter. We wrote this program specifically to convert geometry files into files usable by ProEngineer. We wrote it in Fortran. We then, run a, we then model the plane in ProEngineer and run it through Flow EFD, which gives us CFD values that we enter back into the Cessna analysis program. When we then run the Cessna analysis program, it gives us accurate objective function values that we then plot in Excel and we can see and choose our optimal values. This chart shows our optimal aspect ratio. What it does not show is that our original optimal aspect ratio was actually 3.5. The reason for this was because originally we were using the same airfoil thickness at the root and the tip of the wing. We later decided to experiment with using a thicker root than the tip and found that this optimized our objective function, rather minimize our objective function to a further extent. And we found that with this configuration, 4.0 was actually our most optimal aspect ratio. The optimal sweep angle was much more straightforward. As you can see, 25 degrees was our optimal aspect ratio at the end of our testing. In 
In our final design, we focused on solving for pitching moments. We started with those optimal values that we saw for earlier, and we plugged them into the Cessna analysis program. We then ran the program and received geometry files that we then ran again through the IBL converter and modeled in ProEngineer, at which point we ran it through the flow AFD test, gaining CFD values that we inserted back into the Cessna analysis program. Upon running this program, we were given accurate pitching moment values. What we did with these pitching moment values is we put them into an Excel plot in which we use an innovative process known as linear interpolation. What that process did was it solved for a better angle of attack that would put us closer to zero pitching moments. We ran through this iterative process until we got as close to zero as we could. We used computational fluid dynamics along with the RWDC analysis program to solve for these variables shown. The images shown in this slide show various ways that we verified that our computational fluid dynamics testing was running correctly. They are mesh, convergence of a test, the velocity around the wings, and a cut plot showing the flow around one of our airfoil extrusions. This is a test results spreadsheet that we compiled with all of our results from the RWDC analysis program and our EFT testing. The ones highlighted in blue are our final results and we incorporated these into our final design. Here's our final solution that clears the ground 19.3 inches with a 12 degree rotation. Our center of gravity is 29% MAC with an objective function of 1,080 pounds. We also have an unbalanced pitching moment of negative 23,588 pounds. Here are a few of our innovations that we made. We changed our circular tail cone to an elliptical tail cone decided to use a V-tail with less surface area, and improved our efficiency by adding additional analysis programs. We'd like to thank everyone involved to make this project possible, including our mentors, coaches, Department of Energy, Cessna, and PTC. Thank you.